We met up with Jack Wicks in Burnley. He's a very successful property entrepreneur and he's doing a very different property strategy to what you might have heard of before. It's literally recession proof. So he's buying a property, he's getting a leasing company in there for 10 years and they pay for the repairs, the maintenance, pay for literally everything. So you're guaranteed to get your money and rolling in every month. So very interesting. We're going to spend a day with him. So I hope you enjoy. Today we're in Burnley. We're going to be meeting Jack Wicks. He's got seven properties to show us. Some are near enough complete, some of them are getting there and some of them are just getting started. So it's gonna be so, yeah, let's go see them. Yeah, see you boys. Hello mate, how are you? First time I've seen anything around here. I've never uploaded anyone. Are these for the investors? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they've just bought this, so we've got all sorts going on. Um, with the reefer. Basically, yeah. it's a bit of a nightmare. It's like 10 grand over, potentially. I've been mean, just trying to fix that at the moment. Because um, essentially all, all the all the properties that we do, these all go with a 10 year lease at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is my brother Sam, this is Tanya. Um, and, and they've got specifics on what the refurb needs to be. Yeah. So we can't just do HMO as we normally would and just get an HMO license. They have to have specifics on hallways, Whips and oh, it's just you're a bit of a nightmare. To a company, don't you? Yeah, so it's um, they, they're ten year government back leases. Um, so yeah, so they're they're, they're great for the investors because they're ten years. No, they do maintenance, management, they do absolutely everything. So it's a guaranteed income. Um, so they're brilliant, but uh, they're really anal, which is what Tanya has to deal with on a daily basis. How does it find it? And make sure all these houses are, when that guy comes to check them off and the lease is confirmed, that yeah. it's everything they asked for. Oh, Usually yeah. I would strangle this and log into my arm. And then yeah. it's back again. But slowly but surely we're getting used to all those tiny little things yeah, that you're going to ask for. So we can make sure when they do come, it's just on point and onto the next. Yeah, that's what it is. And this one's going to be four beds? Um, one. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yes. Four. And how much is this one? Um, what? I'd just. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, I've got it all somewhere, yeah. Oh. We find the deals, we oh. renovate, oh, we've got a renovation company as well. Yeah. Um, we furnish it, we've got a furniture company. Yeah. Uh, this is all in seven months, it's been pretty <laughs> mad. Um, but yeah, we just, we just sort of, we're looking into creating our own leases now as well. Because uh -huh. these companies, they're becoming painful. They're actually declining three out of four that we put through, so you have to get pre-checked. So it's a benefit. Because before we buy it, we know that they're going to take it yeah, rather yeah. than buying it, and then they go, no, we don't want it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you've got some shit out in Burnley that nobody wants. <laughs> um, so we've, uh, we're basically looking into creating our own leases that can give the guarantee. So if they say no to it, we can put our own in. Um, so we're working on that at the moment. Then, then, I mean, you've got to deal with it. All of the stress of it. No, it's a little more complicated than that. There's a yeah, there's a lot of management companies that we'll work with that um, that deal with that this tenant type essentially. So it'll be a contract with them and us, and yeah, yeah. So it's a little. It's just we're just sort of at the early stages of that. So um, and those stages, like, is it like asylum seekers or? Like yeah, so this is yeah. So these are all asylum seeker accommodation, which again. You can understand why they're quite anal with stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, internally, I don't really understand it too much as long as it's safe, like any HMO, I get okay. it. Um, but it's it's stuff like, they obviously can't have a full row of asylum seeker HMOs. Yeah. Because the whole place is gonna go to shit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. They, um, they have to be careful on if there's any <laughs> in the road, um, you know, crime rates, all that sort of thing. So they've got to make sure these guys are safe as well. Yeah. And it's not just having a place to live, it's being able to walk out in the street and actually not get shop or stamp or whatever. Yeah. Um, so this is worth pointing out. This is, oh, yeah. this is an extension, this was the back gate. <laughs> and kept on. This is going to be the main bathroom for the whole house. This uh -huh. is the bathroom upstairs which you'll see in a minute. Yeah. Um, so that's essentially going to all get changed so this is the full bathroom. Uh, just being told what this actually is going to do. <laughs> so that, you know, that's all on tether. So do you, do you not refinance the money out of these? Or? It's harder to, um, because we're not actually increasing the value that much. Mm -hmm. um, the level of refurb's lower because it doesn't need to be any higher for the tenant type. Yeah. Um, so all we're doing, we're not increasing the floor space at all. We're just moving rooms around to create a four bedroom HMO. 
which when a valuer comes out, just goes, okay, well, it's just a house with four rooms now. Yeah. But there's no other four bed anywhere near, because they're all two bed, three bed terraces. So they yeah. can't then give you, no. they can't compare it on anything. Yeah. So best case, you'll get your refurb money out. But then if you're using bridging, you're gonna eat all that in your fees and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So we just, we don't sell it as that. We sell it as a 20% return without a refinance. Put your money in, leave back, it, you get your money back in five years. Yeah, yeah. And guaranteed as well. Like yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Um, having done this for eight years and dealt with tenants and some of my single lets that we've had in Hastings, we, we had quite a lot over there. We had a block of flats that we've recently sold. Uh, we had tenant pay perfectly for six months, changed the locks, decided he didn't want to pay anymore. Had to go to court, he had a guarantor. So we've now got a second charge on his mum's house. So if at any point in the future she wants to sell, then we'll get our money back. Pointless. Um, <laughs> so it's like all these problems, you're like even on single let, everyone says, oh, I'll get you vanilla buy to let, single let. They're lovely, you can just leave them there, yeah, yeah, yeah. lovely family in, fuck that, it's just crap. Boring, <laughs> boring, <laughs> crap money. Um, it's just not worth it. I think everyone talks about getting your money back out and then it's, a, you know, infinite ROI. What's yeah. the point when you're putting a hundred pound in your bank account? Yeah, yeah, I'd rather leave my money in and get something substantial out every month. Yeah, yeah. Because so, then your boiler goes and you've lost 10 years worth of income. It's, yeah. it's like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, people forget how much effort it takes to renovate a house, to get the right tenant in. You need like 20 of them to pay like two and a half grand. Yeah, like, yeah. And and buying a house is a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, you've got to go through solicitors and the guy can put out at any time and all of it's just a pain. So we're trying to basically focus on our sourcing companies built on recession proof. Um, and stress-free property investing, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've started with this area because of the leaseholder, and then we're now spreading. We've got the northeast. Um, we've got a provider there. We're even down south as well. We're starting to get um, lease providers that can can do it all, so that it's just like you've got that guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to start buying them up as soon as my house sells. Um, I'm the third <laughs> buyer so far. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah. This, I think this is a, is a pretty typical one. This is, I think we'll probably see a five bed conversion as well um, at some point, but I'm, we're going to be following tandem more than me because <laughs> I've, I've never seen any of these. <laughs> <laughs> All these issues, damp, sloping roof. Um, so this is going to get split in two. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna, new window is going to go in over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's quite amusing, it's like they're like made out of rocks and they move all the Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, they're, they're, some of them are quite substantial. Like you look at um, you look at the purchase price and then you look at the refurb, you're like, wow, it's quite um, quite a lot. <laughs> this was 62. It was 62 grand? Yeah. How much would refurb be on this? I think it's about 25, yeah. 22, something like that. Yeah. So it's hefty on a little yeah, so two bed. percent, 40%. Yeah. But then obviously you're just doing it to get the outcome of the lease. So mm -hmm. um, you can you can overcomplicate property investing as much as you like, and I try and do the opposite and just make it simple, yeah. make it easy for yourself. People think that like, when you start in property, you have to have a right of passage, and you have to oh, I've got to cut my teeth with rent to rent, or cut my teeth with a single buy to let in the family, and then I'll work my way up to HMOs. But why would you? Yeah, yeah. If you can come into an HMO that comes with a guaranteed lease. Surely that's better for a beginner. Because <laughs> yeah. you don't, you'd like 15% you of it. your work, which is filling the thing, getting paid on time, um, trying to chuck out shit tenants when you're not allowed by law anymore. Yeah. Um, just get bored and let someone do it all. Yeah, Why, yeah. Like, just doesn't make sense to me. Or, or I think it's probably because so many courses want to try and sell you the next thing yeah, yeah. so that it, uh, they like to bamboozle people. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, well, you need my course to untangle the mess. It's like, it's not that hard. Yeah, yeah. You just buy this, put it in the spec of a lease, give it to them, and then live your life for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Like spend it on holidays and beer. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bathroom's going to be just downstairs. So, uh, so this will get knocked through. Oh, what? And just turn it to a bigger room. Yeah, and then this will be split in two. Yeah, so you've got this like covered space as well, which will all be yeah, pulled out and made. So then this room will be. Um, Set the window there and sort of. So it'd be four bedrooms total. Because the other benefit is um, of the leases, they don't pay any more money for a bigger room or an ensuite or anything like that. They pay the same rate. So we can 6.51 meters, 
squeeze in as many rooms as you can basically. And you don't have to dick around with putting bits of wood on the wall to make it interesting for a student or anything <laughs> like that. Like, no special colours to keep them entertained, just nothing. Um, <laughs> Future was <amazing>. Yeah, mate. <laughs> People spend their whole life just designing, spending all this money on designing it so they can get an extra ten pound a, a week. <laughs> keep, keep your life simple. <laughs> the budget's looking like it might be a little blown because the stairs. They're saying that the hallway's not wide enough for a hallway. It, between that, apparently, isn't wide enough. Um, and this above your head isn't high enough. Apparently, that's not enough for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why I run it down when there's a fire and just clear yourself out. <laughs> um, yeah, so what made you pick the uh, So we've got five directors in the company basically. Um, so me and my business partner, Kev, obviously my brother's always um, been about. And we were looking to get back into property. So Kev left property to be his systems and outsourcing, he used to run a company just on outsourcing your business. Oh. Um, so he's got 97 or had 97 properties around the whole of the UK managed oh. entirely by virtual assistants. Oh. Um, so he was, um, I, and I'm the complete opposite. I'm like the worst at all of that stuff. So I can meet people, I can connect people, I can see opportunities, I can do all that stuff, but actually doing it in order or having any sort of structure whatsoever is just not me so it works really well as a joint venture uh, and then I've got a coaching company as well so I was coaching a guy um, and he was like yeah he, he was from here I was like yeah I've just um, got back in with this company we're doing these 10-year leases so um, I don't need the coaching program anymore I'm just gonna source these deals um, and he was one man band in it like four or five deals in a month doing the refurbs himself doing everything and then we, we just thought, well, with processing the systems we can put in place, we can do countrywide. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what we did, basically. So, um, so yeah, Kev, Kev's got his, um, a mate that he's worked with for years, uh, a guy called Roy. So all together, there's five of us. So that's why we were here, because the new business partner already had contacts, yeah. could already get into houses, got a build team, all that stuff here. So naturally, especially with the lease, because they're very specific about area. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's only the northwest they cover, uh, and they're always saying yes or no to different areas. They close them up depending on how many are going on. So then we've got, like I, said, like I was saying before, we've then got the northeast, um, and then we've got the south is covered as well. Wales, Scotland are also an island covered by someone. Um, what we don't want to do is go find, go too far apart and not have enough control on the reefer because it's hard enough here at the moment and you get random problems and you're just like, okay, well the budget's looking like it's blown, whereas here we can go find somebody else and try and chip the money back. Because that's the hardest thing about when you're involved in the whole process, is that you're responsible for getting those figures to what they what you said they would be. Um, and naturally, a contractor can go, yeah, it'll be this much money, and then three months later when it's complete, he's changed his mind and actually, oh, I think it's gonna be more now, I'm busier, so I don't care as much, so you're not gonna be as competitive on price then you've got to go around and try and make sure that you are getting it at the, at the right money. So that's been the hardest thing. It's not finding the properties at the moment. It's it's getting them refurbed at the right cost and that they're within budget and time, um, which is always the way, I think. Sweet. Yeah, so when you say that, like, yeah. is just the heading. Yeah. yeah. Finding the right builders. Yeah. It is. Yeah, no, you, you fire away. Yeah, he doesn't know. <laughs> this um, wasn't here, obviously. There was a big vestibule here. This was one, like, a living room. And then it went, like, an archway into the next room. But obviously, we can't have that because it needs, needs to be a bedroom. Yeah. So we've had partition walls put up. This has been removed and a doorway. So I think put in, if you want to. Uh, this <laughs> will be the uh, seat area, lounge area. Uh -huh. Um, and then going through into the kitchen. So, for instance, this kitchen we're going to heat. This is actually, it was all right. Um, but we've taken all the tiles away, and we'll, we'll be redoing that. Then you have a new back door. Mm. Numbers on this one. You what, sorry? The numbers on this one. Uh, numbers. Come on. <laughs> it's, I redo the refurb. Um, 
I've got it. Oh, I've got it. 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 I've all the online portals, yeah. they'll find all potential deals that will then get sent to Sam. Sam then goes through them, make sure that they're suitable, um, whether they're sold or not, find out if they're still available, um, go through the floor plan changes. Uh -huh. um, then once we've got an offer accepted, he clicks a button, pings onto a different board entirely, which is then the selling pipeline. So that's then when uh, myself and Roy get involved. I basically bring the clients into our space um, and get them booking calls with Roy, who talks them through the deals um, and gets them sold on the deal. So then that goes, there's a pipeline for that as well. Um, they all then go on that. The minute it's sold, we click a button, it goes to Sam, who does the um, conveyancing. Uh -huh. So then there's another pipeline for the conveyancing, taking them from you know getting the mortgage offer, getting everything done, all the way through. So he knows who to chase, what solicitors holding things up, what vendors holding things up, what documents they need. Um, then again, when it's completed, click a button, goes into the refurb team. They've got a full pipeline with the refurb. Um, and then it's done. So, so they're all separate boards uh -huh. with different members of the team, depending on who's responsible for what. Um, so we don't really, what we, what we try to avoid is me calling Tandy being like, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, me, yeah. Me, and, me and Jack don't ever, I passed up, can't we? Yeah. Can't we, really? we only met last week for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I yeah. send, on a sign, obviously, I'm coming and taking pictures of the progress all the time, videos of the progress, which I can put through a yeah. sign and then he can use for marketing. Uh -huh. So uh, we just work for that, but we don't ever actually have to like liaise with each other. Where I do with Sab a bit so often because he's picking the houses and I don't have to go back to him and say, yes, this works or it doesn't, uh -huh. and stuff like that. But, most yeah. of it's kind of like pictures can go on Asana, yeah, um, updates on it, like tried to contact, didn't get through, and so you yeah. just look through the notes and you kind of go, oh, well, don't need to speak to them actually, and then oh, save yeah. time. On, That's why we have it. Do you um, use that for like graphic companies as well? Because obviously you do. Yeah, they're all, all, all on Asana, all, yeah, all, they're kind of all interlinked, all same systems and yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, I wouldn't have the first idea how to set it up. Yeah, but yeah. When, when it's running, it's working. That's Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> That's Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> it goes over my head as well. So um, I think we got this for 60. Uh -huh. And refurb is 21,660. Uh -huh. Um Refurb class. And this one again will be 821 that we'll get from it. And that's a 10 year lease. So, yeah. We try we try and hit 20% return on investment if we can. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's above 15. Yeah, 15 is our minimum. That. But the average is kind of anywhere 18. 20 we've yeah. we've had some in excess of um but they're kind of quite quite rare now due to the market we can't, we're, yeah. we're having to offer like you're not going to get below market value unless you're you've got an extremely like motivated vendor yeah, yeah. but most motivated vendors put it on the open market and it's sold within a day yeah, so they don't really need somebody to turn up and pretend they know what they're talking about after being on the course <laughs> um, and offering them a lease option when it doesn't actually fit what they want <laughs> So yeah, it, it, it like sounds pretty good. He's he, he was a he was a pub landlord for well his whole life pretty much. I worked in pubs with Sam until I I'd started in property. So he's used to dealing with negotiating. He's great at managing tenants because he's used to trying to kick people out of the pub at closing time. <laughs> um, and most tenants are pissed. So he's uh, yeah he, he he's been really good with that side of things. And now he doesn't have to deal with the tenant side of stuff. So uh, he's quite close with that now. I lasted six months managing tenants and I was yeah. like, Sam, quit, quit your job, I can't do this. That's also the beauty of this though, with, with the investors, like, they never have to any of that. Yeah, Some yeah. of the investors don't even ever see the house. Yeah. Like, yeah. In some, do we have any that haven't lived in this country or anything? No, not yet, I don't think. Well, we've had people that are interested in, and people that do live in this country that maybe live like way down south, and they just, they're happy with the pictures, all right, what's this, how much they cost, and they know that by the end of it, they're just going to get their 8 20 a month yeah, for yeah. however long. They may, they may never come and see it. The only ones that do view it, they only view it because well, I suppose I'm supposed to. Do you know what I mean? It's that mindset yeah. of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm putting all this money into something, I should at least see that it exists. I have, yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a guy coming tomorrow from London. I can give a fuck, I don't know, I don't need to see it. I have a guy coming tomorrow from London and he's like, I 
have a guy coming tomorrow from London, coming all the way up, so it's like four or five hours um, for 15 minute viewing. <laughs> where I'm just gonna go, we're gonna put a wall here. <laughs> and, and over there, um, all this is gonna be done because this is the standard that they want it to. These are other ones I've done that I can show you, mm. and that's it. I think some people just like touching the money they've spent. That's yeah. Like, yeah, that was me. Bought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then screw you there, mine. I put the money in them. Lovely. I like, wanna, yeah, I want to see the area. Just get on, four hour drive home. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Literally. It must have been like content or something. It? Yeah, well, it's, it's difficult no, because I think. Mean, People are older as well, like they don't feel like they're old people on yeah. social media. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just sit with them. Don't get started. Don't get started. Yeah, that's the old people. I was in tears watching that. I showed my mum. She was like, <laughs> oh, Stephen, watch this. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, I got a lot of abuse for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the old people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kev, Kev in was like, Oh, yeah, I think you got that one wrong, mate. <laughs> Maybe don't post it in a Facebook group full of the people you're talking about. Yeah. I was like, yeah, maybe that was an error. You need error. to start creating certain type of content for certain platforms. Yeah, yeah. It's well, and he was like, they shouldn't even be fucking driving. Like. He was like, they shouldn't even exist. <laughs> you got it, it in. It was, ama- it was amazing the people that thought I was being serious as well. I was like, they were like, what about your parents? I was like, obviously I'm joking. Like, yeah. You can't actually think I'm serious about shipping all old people onto an island. <laughs> You can't think that's me being serious. But well, you've got traction, any traction's good traction. Yeah, you know that's I mean? it. So, there you go. So, do you want to see me as the next one? Yeah, yeah. So, then they're very straight away on TikTok. I'm just getting called scam. Because I sell a course. So, oh, yeah, of course you sell the course. Scam. <laughs> yeah. Fucking worst scammer in the world charging you a pound. <laughs> <laughs> Try it for a pound. Oh, you hate it. Scammed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, right, so he's taking us to the next one. Which is just around the corner apparently. Oh, yeah. Go see it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Walkways that we have here in Blackford. Blackford. At Quinton. So this one is uh, a new contractor. Um, once you've done one and you know all the regulations and spec and exactly how it needs to be, it's great, you can just do the next and do the next. The first one's always a little harder there than because I'm, I'm, I help hold the hand a little bit to show exactly what, what it needs. Yeah. So this one is the smallest house that we've bought um, and we kind of, so it was bought before I started and uh-huh. like, I mean like we're, we're utilising every little tiny bit of space we can to make these rooms like uh-huh. regularly. So this one had quite a lot of damp so yeah. we had a full damp course but up so they knock it off a metre high yeah. um, put all this material on, be put out, put your plaster in, make good. Um, this room here will be a uh, bedroom one. A few boxes and things are in these rooms which can't be in bedrooms so all that's having to be new fuse box but also replaced in the community area yeah, yeah. which will be the hallway. So, you want to come through? Just watch your feet, guys. And um, this will be the living area. New space again. All damp course has been done on this one. Make sure you don't have any of that. So the kitchen was tiny. Any time that a kitchen is under seven square meters, we have to open up, open it up. Uh-huh. So we're putting like a new hand uh, steel in there for structure, and then um, that will be opened up. Please yeah. can see there. Yeah. It'll be an open space then. I thought you mean about the um, the lease company though, with things like that. It's not actually made that much more space. It's just opened the door a little bit to yeah. make it open plan. Whereas if it was your own house, you didn't have to worry about anyone else. You just leave it as it was. Leave it a little bit like. We have to follow exactly what they say. Sometimes we think why, but you just know. These will be coming down um, so you can have more space, and then we're going to have like a breakfast bar area. And uh, because it is so small, instead of us having like a big dining table with all the chairs that you need for the amount of people that are going to live here, we can utilise and just have like a little thin breakfast bar, which then again we're saving space. Um, so yeah, this will all be ripped out, new kitchen's going in. Where's your dad? Hello, no worries. We're just doing some going bits. No problem. Leaning backwards. Feels like you're falling backwards. Yeah. This room here is uh, the typical front room split. So we've already got a window on one side, um, and then we're putting a window on the other. This room, come through the hall. <laughs> this room was so. Oh, Nick, it's so dusty. I know. I've just torn it. Started shoveling. Could have saved the carpet in here. 
Oh, we're getting there. We can't no. because we can't because it's going to be a whole big room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Um, so this room is obviously too small. So we've opened it up all like through the back of the stairs. So it goes on a diagonal as well because we still need even more room. Mitch, literally, how long did you spend on digging it all around? Oh. Yeah, we were on the phone to me. I'm like, oh, I'll come and don't put the walls up. I'll come and remeasure. So I came. And it was absolutely perfect. Now made the bathroom smaller again. Got my at an angle, so everything's now fit. Thankfully. <laughs> but yeah, this more this is coming out. And this it's one's going to be Yeah. yeah. Right. Not too bad. Um, we this we moved this wall as far over as possible as we can. Um, to give this space. With this still isn't enough space. I'm going to double check out about some here. It feels like a museum, you know, like in an old house where they show you where like Anne Boleyn used to bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we need more usable floor space it's not big enough. So this cupboard is being taken out, the boiler is being put higher. So then that floor space is usable and then we can fit chest of drawers under it. And that makes it big enough. And the bathroom through this. Oh, no. One thing I am good at with building, breaking things. <laughs> <laughs> with um, the HMOs full stop, uh, is like you totally understand that they need to be safe. Fire safety is important, fire exits, all that sort of stuff. But how are you going to tell someone what size of room is okay for them or not? Yeah, yeah. Sphinx a little bit backwards, like people who've never lived in a small room before. Like we've all lived in a box room before, yeah, yeah. and it's fine. And someone who's got a small budget, would rather pay less money and live in a smaller room because yeah. then you've got communal space still, kitchen, living room. Mm -hmm. So that all they want to do is sleep in that bed and then they're moving uh -huh. out and they'd rather pay less. Yeah, but yeah. then the council stand there and go, well, well I think 6.51, by the way, 5.1 <laughs> is the specific amount that we think is okay as a minimum room size. For what reason? Because yeah. then a property, yeah. someone who's going to have a property is going to have to charge them more money. So then when do they live? Uh -huh. it's, it's like, I just think fire safety obviously needs to be taken into consideration to be important, but to tell someone the quality yeah. of life essentially that they should have, i.e. what size room they should live in, it seems weird. Yeah. As long as there is communal space, it should be. Yeah, yeah. But hey. We don't have to get the plumber in anyway to fix it, or have parts as a skeleton. From then on, I know more. It's ridiculous. This is one of our finished ones. So as you see in the other ones, we have the, the first bedroom on the first floor. So. Look at that, we have gone for the feature walls. <laughs> this is obviously too small already there, there's no point in changing it. It all it gives them appliances as well, so washing machine, fridge, freezer, yeah. microwaves, yeah. all the furnace. Yeah. The people that stay in these, like the assigned seekers, it's all temporary accommodation. So once they've come here, they could be here for three to six months, get themselves on the feet, and then they move on, and then it's a new a new person that comes in. Um, and like we said before, they all they keep them. The reason the PCC is cancelled in some of the places, failed, sorry, um, is because they, they want them to blend into our community. Yeah, they don't yeah. want them congregating and you know being secluded by themselves. So yeah, they yeah. want them to be a part of. Uh, like yeah, make friendly neighbours yeah, 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 and everything, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why we can't get them into close proximity. Like the things that they like, they pull like, like everything needs to be corked. Like there's a little tiny gap in the paint. Like the the things that you, sometimes you'll you'll have lists and you'll see the list and like, what do they mean? Like I can't see anything. Yeah, but they yeah. pick the most minute things. So it's just getting to the grips with all those tiny things we're going to ask. Like for instance, this silicone here. That couldn't have just been plastered to the wall and all we'd have to put that white sealant down there because that's what we asked for. The room was uh, one big bedroom mm -hmm. all the way across so we put a new window in for this room. Uh -huh. um, that's that's yeah. So we normally talk from start to finish with the contractors in, we give them three to four weeks. For instance, in that, one of the other finished ones that I'll show you, that took three and a half weeks. Okay. Three, three to four weeks yeah, yeah. Um, and now it's just having the final little snags done and then it will be signed off um, and that was my first full project so I came to this one half done yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. the next one you'll see. This one's just, it is finished but there's just having those final snags. Yeah, yeah. Um, which we've come and told them what they are and they're being satisfied. 
I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. So, oh, yeah. we also have this out here as well. Mm -hmm. The parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, for instance, one of the snags were we weren't allowed to store handle on here. We had it all refitted. This was like a shell that we've made into a proper like room, so it can is usable. They want a coded lock on here, so we're having a new handle fitted. And then this room was completely made into a room. We had to have a pop window and door put in it, and because obviously the washing machines in here, the gas meter, um, and the boiler. So that's how we had it all made into a proper room because they didn't like that it was just more like an outhouse it needed to be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, upstairs. So you just buy all the same like furniture? Yeah, like all the same. These two rooms were like this, uh -huh. but um, one was slightly too small. So all we did was change the partition in the middle to move slightly over. Well, then that made this room too small. So then we had to change the partition to make this tiny bathroom to make this room bigger. Maybe you come in and see behind the door. Yeah. I remember this one. I tend to shut off in meetings when they talk about these things, but I remember this one. So yeah, we made it. Sorry, it was like that. <laughs> you shut off and I'll just make sure we get past it. <laughs> okay. And then we put a hole in your bathroom. That was a waste of money. Could have kept the normal tiles, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the, we bought it for 75 and the refurb cost was 11 uh, plus furniture. How much is furniture? Two and a half. Two and a half. So what's the rent? Eight twenty a month. Is that always 820? Yeah, four beds are 820. Uh -huh. um, five beds are 1,020. Five. And 825, yeah. Okay. So yeah, and they're, they're primarily the same for, for the majority that we're doing in this like Lancashire area. And we're trying to then make every standard be the standard. Uh -huh. um, because like like I said, my bit of them coming in, it's all well and good like selling the deal and the investor has you know, we, we've got the ball rolling, you guys have done your bit, but the work actually starts tonight, we're season keen, I actually have to get this done. The work starts when we sell the deal, but... <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, I have like, I don't want them to keep coming back and like, for us to keep having snags and snags and snags. I want to be off, kicking the next key up the next one. Yeah, so, we've, but, um, so hopefully, hopefully we've got a few snags on this one, which will be next by, like, by the end of this week, early next. Mm -hmm. And this will be done. It'll be turning to like the one down the road. Yeah. So yeah, they've taken us to see like five or six houses. Um, basically what they're doing is they're getting a company to lease the properties off of them for 10 years. So they deal with all the repairs, all the maintenance, they return the property back to you, how you gave it to them. So there's not even any like repairs at the end. And they guarantee the rent for the whole time. So you're literally getting like HMO money from a single let and you don't have to deal with it, you don't have to do nothing, there's no fluctuation of income, just guaranteed, so it's literally like recession proof, anything proof, which mind you just comes into your bank every month. So interesting strategy that they're doing. Um, it's a great selling point as well for the investors, but it's guaranteed you don't have to do anything, it's all hands off to them. Yeah, there's no worrying about evicting a tenant and like going through all the legal stuff with that or if a tenant can't pay rent or anything like that it's just literally guaranteed rent straight away so it's insane and now i think they're going to be taking us to another three-story one that they're doing so see you there so it's probably spatially a bit better yeah so there's two here and then one more level yeah so this is massive so the only the only reason I can think of that they wouldn't be able to make a five is bathrooms, uh -huh. um, because obviously going from a four to a five you need an additional WC. Uh -huh. All the rooms are big here, which annoys me. Yeah. Well, the yeah. window looks so one. Yeah. Yeah. Or a couple more people in here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what happens at the end of the lease? Right, the lease. So it depends. I mean, generally they'll take it on for another ten years because they don't want to keep coming around checking out it's like this, you're signing them off. So if they've worked for 10 years, then they're probably going to sign up again. There'll be no reason not to. Yeah. Um, but if not, the person who buys it owns it. Yeah. So they can either put another housing association in. Um, usually it's perfect housing benefit tenants. Um, so you put them in with um, an all-manager company. 
pay it all just set up to the best one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of options with it. Um, because when I'm explaining these deals, people normally think, because I'm talking about lease, mm -hmm. the lease, everyone gets confused between, they think they're not actually owning the property yeah, or something yeah. like that, but um, yeah, you own it. A, a lot in this this um, part of the country are weirdly leaseholds, but they're like 999 year leaseholds and it's like a pound a year or, you know, it's not, it's not even worth yeah. worrying about. It's no different to a freehold, there's no, yeah, what's that about, Tanya, do you know? What? Why some of that, most of the houses around here are leaseholds? No, I, I don't know. Challenge yeah. of Sam, what bill that's there. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, I don't know, but it, but yeah, it doesn't really affect you like a flat would. Normally yeah, you've yeah. got the ground rent, management, and yeah. maintenance, all that stuff, but there's none. Um, what gave you the idea as well to do this strategy? It was, it, it was, it was me and Challenge first, uh, and he, um, so he's the director, I'm one of the directors of the company, and he was doing it here. Um, and I was just like, yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. And he was obviously selling them to um, um, to people anyway, but on his own. Mm -hmm. um, so we just thought, this, especially as our company started in the middle of lockdown. So we were like, people talking about tenants not paying. Mm -hmm. um, we were dealing with tenants leaving and going to live in at parents because they knew we were going to get locked down. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do anything about the void because you can't get anyone back in. Um, and it was like, how can we like have the freedom that we got into property for. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. you quickly get into property thinking it's going to give you freedom and then you pick up the phone at midnight yeah, dealing yeah. with two tenants that are having a dispute over the milk that someone drank. It's like yeah. fucking out. Yeah. You end up being like a care worker or something half yeah. the time yeah. of HMA. Yeah. Trying to get people to get on and go and say sorry to him. We yeah. literally yeah. had to do it. We literally to take the bin out. Like, yeah. Oh no, because he, he didn't do it last week or something. It's like yeah. we, we've had it where it's like a game of buckaroo. They're all putting the last bit of like banana skin on the top, waiting for the last person to fall on about you know, I'll take it then. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you, you do have, you have it's like dealing with children, so it, it became frustrating. Um, we tried service accommodation, same thing. Uh -huh. Police getting called, mm. uh, fraudulent bookings, whereas this is like, there are downsides to it, as we discussed, like refinancing, you're not going to get loads of money back out. Mm -hmm. um, your best option is to buy cash and then finance once, um, so then your fees aren't gonna get eaten up. Yeah. Um, because your best bet, you know, one of them, I think we did the figures, you'd get about 15 grand uplift for a 20 grand spend. Yeah, yeah. So you get a bit of that money back, maybe 10 grand. So if you went and did it with a bridge, you're gonna be yeah. five grand in fees anyway. So it really would be worth it. Um, it's just not that strategy. It's, you know, there, there are gonna be downsides. The best bit about it is stick your money in, you're gonna get it in incrementally each month. Mm -hmm. Five years, all your initial investments back, uh -huh. um, and you start to work back. Like the investors basically get someone to do a rent to rent, but they literally pay for everything rather than just like a little minor thing. Yeah, and and obviously with rent to rent, there's a lot of new starters. There's a lot of people that don't have much in terms of backing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas this is a blue chip company that is government backed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. what that means is, if if the blue chip were to, for whatever reason, die and fall fall through. The government would just get someone else to replace that contract. So you would continue to get the same deal, it would just be a new person comes in and takes over, so it would continue to run. That's mad. Yeah, so, so it's, you know, it's as bulletproof as you're going to get yeah. in terms of a guarantee of your money. That's a massive salary. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the contract with the government, 2.6 billion just for this part of the country. Yeah, and that's so you've got the north east is a different contract, so probably another two foot two and a half, and then the south is probably I don't know, probably more down yeah. down south because they need to put more up. Right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. All of Jack's social medias and all of his links are gonna be in the description, so make sure you check them out. Feel free to drop us a comment as well. Smash the likes as always, hit the subscribe button, do what you need to do. We'll see you on the next one. Also, we've got another video of Jack Wicks coming soon, so make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss it. See you in a bit.